discuss them one by one. In the treatment of established malignant hyperthermia, the following recognized as a part of treatment except dandrolin, EDTA, sodium bicarbonate, glucose and insulin. Now to understand this question, you need to understand this topic of malignant hyperthermia, which is an extensive topic that I always discuss in class as well as in my test and discussion. So you all know that malignant hyperthermia is a genetic condition. This genetic condition is because of this rhinodin receptor problem, right? Which happens because of the mutation on chromosome 19 because of which you have a faulty rhinodin receptor that causes massive calcium efflux from the sarcoplasmic reticulum that causes intense muscle contraction and then subsequently increased metabolism this leads to hyperthermia so you know that the pathophysiology is basically increase in metabolism. This is the pathophysiology and based on this pathophysiology, you have the management. So every single thing that happens during the pathophysiology of malignant hyperthermia, you treat it accordingly. So the first step in the management is of course IV dandrolin, which is a skeletal muscle relaxant. So this relaxes the skeletal muscles and therefore this is considered to be the agent of choice or treatment of choice of malignant hyperthermia. This is usually given as a bolus dose of 2.5 mg per kg every 5 minutes. How much? Up to 10 mg per kg. That means you can give up to 4 bolus doses right followed by an infusion and this infusion is 1 mg per kg given over 6 hours for at least 24 to 48 hours so this is how you give dandrolin once you give dandrolin and there is initial control of symptoms then the whole management is symptomatic so what do we do so first we discontinue all anesthetic agents which cause trigger and this is a trigger based event and the triggers are anesthetic that is choline amongst muscle relaxant and all volatile anesthetic agents. So all inhaled anesthetic agents except nitrous and xenon are the trigger all volatile anesthetic agents right and you hyperventilate with 100% oxygen with a fresh flow of at least 10 liters per minute that means very high flow reconstitute dandrolin and dandrolin is reconstituted in sterile water not normal saline and it is given bolus and then infusion then because there is lot of acidosis so you give soda bicarb then you start cooling the patient you monitor urine output establish diuresis for hyperkalemia you start bicarb glucose insulin drip and later because of hyperkalemia there will be arrhythmias so for arrhythmias you will give antiarrhythmics all antiarrhythmics can be given except verapamil because verapamil is a calcium channel blocker and verapamil increases serum potassium and therefore should be avoided all right what you don't give is sodium edta which acts as an anticoagulant so basically it is not something that you have to give in the management of malignant hyperthermia so it was a pretty straightforward question Next question, duration of anesthesia will have following effect on the MAC of inhalational agent. So what is the MAC of inhalational agent? MAC is the minimum alveolar concentration, minimum alveolar concentration of inhaled anesthetic agents which prevents response in 50% of patients. You have to remember that MAC signifies the potency of inhaled anesthetic agents and then there are several factors that change the potency of inhaled anesthetic agents the question is asking whether the duration of anesthesia has anything to do with potency so it's basically asking 
that if you use an anesthetic agent for a longer period of time will its potency change so the answer is no there is no change in potency no matter you give anesthesia for 1 hour 2 hour 10 hour 15 hours 20 hours the potency remains the same that means the requirement of anesthetic agents remains the same all right which of the following muscle relaxants is eliminated most by renal excretion so it is asking about renal excretion of muscle relaxants options are pan neva atra rock now this is a pretty straightforward question the confusion here can come between pan and rock uranium because we know meva is metabolized by pseudopolynesterase, which is a plasma based enzyme so there is no significance of organ of excretion and atracurium is by hoffman's elimination So the doubt comes in pan and rock. The question is which of the following is eliminated the most. So it is not asking just which is eliminated by kidneys. Pan curonium is eliminated 80% by urine. 80% which is highest. While vecuronium and rock uronium, they have intermediate durations of action, undergo primarily hepatic metabolism, biliary excretion with limited renal excretion that is 10 to 20%. 10 to 25%. So it is something that we not normally pay attention to, but I wanted you to know this point that pancuronum is not only something that is long acting, but it is also maximum excreted through renal excretion. Okay. Not a useful indication for ketamine are all except. We know there are wide variety of indications of ketamine, right? Let's look at the options. Refractory cyanotic spells, anesthetic in head injury, Induction anesthetic in squint surgery, induction anesthetic in pheochromocytoma. Not a useful indication of ketamine all except. So not a useful indication all except means it is asking indication. So it's a double negative question, something that you have to pay attention in the exam. Whenever you get such a question in the exam, I would want you to write this thing because double negatives you tend to get confused so it's better to write what is being asked so what is asked is indication now can you give it in refractory cyanotic spells let's leave it for a moment can you give it in head, in head injury no can you give it in squint surgery no can you give it in pheochromocytoma no why in head injury because ketamine will increase icp in squint surgery because it increases iop in FIO because it increases heart rate and blood pressure by indirect sympathomimetic action. But can you give it in synotic spells? What is synotic spell? It is a typical feature of right to left shunt diseases. Right to left shunt diseases, right? So ketamine is an indirect sympathomimetic agent and ketamine increases systemic vascular resistance SVR that means it causes peripheral vasoconstriction since it causes peripheral vasoconstriction therefore it increases left sided pressures am I right and if there is increase in left sided pressure, there is decrease in right to left shunt. There is a decrease in right to left shunt. Now what is synotic spell? A typical feature of a synotic congenital heart disease. Synotic spell. Synotic spell is when there is mixing of deoxygenated with oxygenated blood. That happens when there is a right to left shunt that is significant. So any agent that decreases right to left shunt is bound to decrease synotic spell. And that agent is ketamine. Therefore, it is considered to be agent of choice for synotic congenital heart disease. Alright. So the correct answer to this question is option A that is refractory synotic spells. Alright. The following statement about this device is correct except so let's identify this device there is a bowel there is a tube there is a cuff looks like a supraglottic airway device
which is SAD, also called as laryngeal mask airway. Now let's look at the options. Mouth opening less than two centimeters is a relative contraindication for insertion of device. Use of this device is associated with less incidence of airway complications. Cervical collar or manual inline stabilization does not appear to interfere with successful placement. Should not be used in professional singers as this causes more sore throat than endotracheal tube. So the question is straightforward. Which statement is correct except that is wrong statement and you can very clearly see that one of the biggest advantages of something that is staying outside the vocal cords is that it has got less sore throat and less risk of vocal cord damage as compared to an endotracheal tube right let's look at other option is opening less than two centimeters a relative contraindication for the insertion of device yes it is a relative contraindication because till 2 cm till this cuff can enter the mouth you can easily you can insert and properly place the laryngeal mask airway but if the mouth opening is less than 2 cm then it becomes a problem so yes it's a relative contraindication use of this device is associated with less incidence of airway complications yes less sore throat less problems after insertion and a cervical collar and manual inline stabilization does not interfere with successful placement because you don't need a typical uh, change of position that is the uh, barking dog position or sniffing the morning air position for insertion of laryngeal mask airway. All right. So the correct answer to this is option D. So these were the five questions. All the very best.